Today, we're gonna take apart this SGI Indigo 2 that we revived in our last video, see what kind of treasures lurk inside, and then we're gonna shove as much RAM in it as possible. It's high-end Unix flavored madness, so stay tuned. And if you enjoy tinkering with rare and exotic e-waste, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. This is my SGI Indigo 2 R10K Impact, an absolutely wild Unix-based graphics workstation that cost around $50,000 in 1996. These are the computers that made early CGI movies like Toy Story possible. In our last video, we replaced the dead hard drive with a SCSI to SD and used a really cool project called Reanimator to install IRIX 6.5.22 from a Raspberry Pi. IRIX, of course, being the really cool SGI operating system based on Unix System 5 with BSD and some proprietary extensions added in that I really want to have some fun with in the near future. So my goal is to build this machine into the ultimate upgraded example of an SGI Indigo 2. And to further that goal, there's a few things that I want to do today. First, of course, I want to disassemble it, take a look at all the fun stuff inside. While we're in there, I bought a ludicrous amount of memory that I'm pretty sure is compatible, and I may be pushing my luck a bit, but I also want to install a Blue SCSI V2 and try to install IRIX on that, because that will give us a lot more versatility with disk and uh, CD-ROM images. And I also have some top secret plans to make this, well, ridiculously fast. So without further ado, let's take this thing apart. Actually, one more ado. A quick word about today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a one-stop solution for all of your PCB assembly and fabrication needs. Do you need to prototype something, build a run of a project? I bet PCBWay can handle the whole thing, the whole way through. PCB prototyping starts at just $5 for 10 pieces with as little as a 24 hour turnaround. And boy, do they offer a lot of different options. Flex PCB, Rigid Flex, HDI PCBs, and they even offer PCB assembly, through hole and surface mount. And that starts at just $29 for one to 20 pieces. The low pricing and ease of ordering has made PCBWay the preferred vendor for many in the retro community for years. So if you have any PCB or prototyping needs, I hope we'll give PCBWay.com a try. Unfortunately, I still haven't figured out a solution for this busted front door other than double-sided tape. Now take the sword out. Front comes off, super easy. Pop these drives out. Man, this is so pleasant to work on. And then on the front case, there are two buttons we can push in to lift the whole front off. And that brings the whole top right up like that. And just look how cool this thing is on the inside. We've got SCSI carried over flat flex cable with silicon graphics branding. And to take the graphics card out, we actually have a nice little door. <laughs> look at that. Everybody always asks where I got this screwdriver from. It's Fantic. All right. Whew. Look at this beefcake of a graphics card, dual layer. Look at these power connectors, or I, I assume they're power connectors. We'll come back to this thing. Just disconnect this cool flat flex cable. That is so neat. Aha. Uh -huh. And here we have the heart of the beast, the R10K CPU. Yeah, look at that beefy connector. All right, let's see if we can get this heat sink off to repaste this thing. Almost missed this little guy right at the end here. Would you look at that? There is actually no thermal compound on this thing. <laughs> Just bare metal. I guess it can't hurt to add some thermal compound, right? 
Anyway, here is our MIPS R1000 CPU made by NEC. Yeah, this thermal pad actually still seems just fine. But I guess I will add thermal compound to the CPU because that will make me feel better. All right, while we're in here, I have purchased what I think is one gigabyte of RAM because that's actually how much this machine can handle. And as I understand it, back in the day, they advertised this as taking up to 768 megs of RAM, even though this could fit one gigabyte because well, one gig was a ludicrous amount back then, and they were concerned about the heat generated from all of those memory chips. But I like to take a, a risk every now and then. Oh yeah, that is a dense amount of RAM. Jeez, look at that. And this center board here, this is really just a riser with all of the ports on it. This gargantuan double stacked impact graphics card is connected by the GIO64 bus, which is proprietary to SGI, and also these very beefy power connectors. Yeah, I do not want to take this thing apart because it has flat flex cables and I would be terrified of ripping them off. And this isn't even the highest end graphics card. There is a triple stacked card, maximum impact, that I would love to get a hold of. Anyway, let's shove it back in here. And check it out, I 3D printed these stands so we can stand our SGI up on its end. Pretty cool, somebody reverse engineered these from the originals. Just look at this freaking battle station. Let's see if it boots with a gig of RAM. All right, well, I took four sticks back out and now it is booting back up. According to System Manager, main memory is one gigabyte. So I guess I just have no idea what the heck is going on. How big are these sticks? Okay, well, turns out I'm just an idiot. These are 128 megabyte sticks, and I tried to install 12 of them, which is more than one gigabyte. So no wonder it didn't work. This now has eight sticks, 128 megs each, equaling one glorious gigabyte of memory in this maxed out system. Uh, that is pretty cool for 1996. All right, so here is a nice, fresh, blue SCSI V2. And on this 16 gigabyte SD card, I have a blank four gigabyte disk image. All right, yeah, that worked. We have IRIX 6522 installed on a blue SCSI. Yeah, this is gonna make it super easy to get SGI software from CD images from like archive.org onto this machine because I can just pop out the SD card, put the ISO image from the CD-ROM right on there. And then when I boot this thing back up, IRIX should see that as if it were an actual CD-ROM device. Of course, a big consideration between the SCSI to SD and the blue SCSI, while both excellent devices, is speed. And I have a hack planned that should make this Blue Scuzzy V2 a force to be reckoned with. So if you want to see that, make sure you're subscribed. Oh uh, yeah, check it out. What do you think of my desktop here? <laughs> I think this looks freaking awesome. And the CD-ROM emulated through the Blue Scuzzy does work. I don't think there's anything on this CD-ROM I put in there that can work, but check that out. Oh, this is so freaking sweet.
Man, we've come so far with this sweet behemoth of an Indigo 2. This purple monster now has one gig of RAM and a working IRIX install on a blue SCSI that even works with CD-ROM ISO images. Now, I do want to find the top of the line cards for this thing, so I think there is a faster processor card and the three layer maximum impact graphics card, but I have a feeling those would be pretty hard to come by. In its current state, I think we could have some fun exploring SGI software and demos from back in the day, and I think I want to do a video about that because <laughs> some of those demos are pretty freaking cool, and you might recognize some of those demos from a very famous movie from the 90s. It's a unique system. I know this. It's all the files of the whole park. It tells you everything. In any event, if you enjoy weird Unix graphics workstations, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more stuff like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And I just want to give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you, for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful, and I just could not do this without you.